to the front. If you have a need, let God know you're coming to boldly approach the throne of grace, that you want to boldly come to where everybody can come. The only king that allows his subjects to come to the throne is the God that we serve. So if you have a need, come tonight and seek after God for your need. Lord, we want to ask tonight that you would just look down from heaven tonight. Lord, we just want to pray that that you would hear us, our needs tonight. Lord, we pray over the sicknesses that are in this place, Lord. We want to lift up the ones that really need you tonight, God. We, We want to lift up Sister Peaches. We want to lift up Brother Walter, that you would just bring them comfort, that you would bring him peace, that you would bring her, oh God, that you would just bring her the things that she needs, comfort pray that that pain would go away. I pray that that there's going to be a quick recovery, God. I pray over every need in this place tonight. Lord, there's people here that that just need somebody to listen to them, God, and you're there for that, Lord. You're the comfort. God, you're everything that we could ever even ask for, Lord. You're everything that we could need, God. And I just pray that we would seek after you first tonight, Lord. God, that we would quit trusting in ourselves, that we would quit trusting in and the things that this world can give us because it's it's a dead end road, Lord. But whenever we take it to you, God, God, whenever we take our needs to you, God, there's victory in the name of Jesus. There's salvation in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Everything that we could ever think, everything that we could ever ask, Lord, we're going to find it in you. God, and I pray tonight that you would see us tonight as we come and we seek after you, Lord, that you would see the faith that some of these people in here have step out to seek after you, God. Lord, we thank you for everything and ask and pray these things in Jesus' name.
So many times across this faith, no matter where you go, people want to they want to ask you, what do you plan on getting out of that service? What do you plan on getting out of going to church all the time? What do you plan on getting out of serving God? But I want to ask you a better question tonight. What do you plan on giving? What do you plan on putting into this service? What do you plan on putting in to the kingdom of God? I want to tell you tonight, the God we serve is the God of multiplication. And we're about to pray, we're about to take up the offering, but I just want to build your faith a little bit tonight. I personally know, over the past couple weeks, I have at least one instance where something in this prayer happened. Now, this person I know works a job where they don't give Christmas bonuses. This person works a job where if they do get a bonus, it doesn't come out until about sometime in April when nobody has any business really buying anything. But the other day, this person told me that their boss came out to him and said, hey, I need you to come talk to me for a second. Now, for some people that may not have a good relationship with their boss all the time, that's kind of a scary thought. Now, I just told you we serve the God of multiplication. This person donated a pretty large sum of money to the kingdom of God not too long ago and a few days ago whenever that boss 
said, hey, come here, I need to talk to you. At a time where bonuses are not given for Christmas, and when they are, it ain't even the right time of year. He hands this person a piece of paper and says, hey, just want to let you know you're doing a good job. Here's an extra $3,000. That's the kind of God that we serve. That's the raises and the bonuses. That's the gifts and surprises. I want to let you know if you're just faithful that things like that can happen, God will bless you. It may not always be in money. He may just keep your vehicle running a little longer where you ain't got to pay for it. He may just make it to where the bank will call you and say, hey, just by the way, you paid a little too much this year. Or your insurance company may call you and say, hey, we, we owe you some money. That's how God works. But I want to ask you tonight, we get the ways to give on the board. Really consider what you can do for the kingdom of God. The money just doesn't stay here. It doesn't just go to these plates and into our pastor's pocket. It don't. It goes out into this world. You, you would not believe how many missionaries we have taken on to give a monthly gift to. You would not believe how far your dollar reaches around this world to spread the gospel. You give one dollar, you're helping save somebody's soul in China. You would not believe how far this goes in the kingdom of God. But we have so many ways to give. We have GiveLify and we have PayPal at riverbendpentecostals.com. You can mail, cash your checks to P.O. Box 477 here in New Madrid, Missouri, zip code 63869. Or you can give the old-fashioned way here in the pans. Wednesday night, they're all fair game. You can use whichever one you want. But if you would all pray this prayer with me tonight, let's have some faith to believe that God's going to open those windows, that he's going to pour out blessings on us. So if you would, pray this with me tonight. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings, and I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken, and I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, and I am blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen.
You can be seated. Uh, I want to say this before we dismiss the kids. Um, first off, we're not going to be able to deliver the coach till next week because the office has moved and they're in training. And so she sent me a word today. But uh, you, we didn't even spend all the money that was given to us. Um, and there are 58 coats back there that you brought. Isn't that wonderful? You should give yourselves a hand. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. So we've been given some money to buy more coats with. So we're going to take those 58 to the foster children. And then we are going to take the money that we have and we're going to buy coats and don't think I'm goofy, socks and underwear for children and give them to the Eagles closet at the school so they can give them out to all the kids. I just wanted to let everybody know that before the kids took off. And I'm telling you what, there's some really nice coats over there. So thank you. Thank you so much for taking on that burden and giving. And I promise you, I promise you, you're planting seeds. You're planting seeds. And God's going to bless it. So thank you. Thank you very, very much for your giving. Right. If we could have all the kids line up across the front. Looks like Brother Larry's going to hold down the fort back there tonight. We know it's going to be a great class. All right, Chrislyn, go ahead. River been ignited. Y'all can follow right in behind them. We want to welcome Brother GL to the pulpit once again on this fine Wednesday night. He's going to bring the anointed word tonight, and it's going to change somebody's life if you'll receive it. We pray that you'll receive the man of God tonight. Amen. Thank you, Brother Richard. And what a spirit in the house this evening. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lamb of God. My goodness gracious. Praise the Lord. And uh, I, I heard Brother Cody Pikey say this week, he said, I can't tell you the last time I went to church and there wasn't a move of God. And uh, it, it's the truth. Amen. It's the truth. We are incredibly blessed people. And uh, I told somebody, I, I want to say this very clearly. Um, the Lord told the children of Israel when they went to the promised land, he said, when you get there, you're going to drink from wells you didn't dig. You're going to live in houses you didn't build. You're going to eat from vineyards you didn't plant. And uh, that's what we're doing, Brother Terrence. There's lots of prayer and fasting and, and seed that's been planted, Brother David. Lots that's been planted over the years. And we're very grateful to be reaping some of the benefits, aren't we? Amen, aren't we? Please don't think that the God's blessing us because it's all about us. Remember, Sir Isaac Newton said, if I can see anywhere, if I can have any kind of a vision, it's because of the sh shoulders of the giants upon whom I stand. And uh, thank God for our heritage. Um, Brother Shannon is handing out the, the Wednesday night handout for the bait of Satan. Uh, and uh, many of you have purchased the book, and I'm very grateful for that. I will... Uh, um, Perhaps Sister Heidi at some point throughout this teaching could put a, a slide up that says the name of the book and the name of the author. 
and you can Google it, and it's for sale. How many of you saw it's for sale all over the place? eBay, all the bookstores, uh, and uh, one person told me they found four books for $12. So it's, it's not expensive, and they're not new, of course, but uh, um, they are, it's, it's still not going not gonna to cause you to have to hock your wedding ring, so to speak. You've got some of them? All right. Uh, did you bring them with you tonight? No, I didn't know they did. Oh, you got like four or five of them you didn't know? It? That's what I'm talking about. Anna says she'd be happy to share if somebody would like to have one that doesn't. Or, and uh, certainly if you can't afford it, you don't have to go around holding up a sign, we'll work for a book. But, uh, <laughs> but you just kind of let me know on the slick, and I'll see that you've got one. I'll see that you get one. And uh, because how many have been been delving off into it a little bit? A handful, a handful. What do you think about it? It's good stuff, isn't it? Um, and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna just dive right off into it again tonight. And uh, and even if you don't have the book with you, uh, you, you don't even have to necessarily follow along in your book. But there's no way I can teach everything that's in there. But if you get the book and take the handout and the teaching and combine it all together. We're going to like throw hell a curveball that they can't hit because Brother Shannon, a whole lot of stuff that's been working for a long time for the devil ain't going to work no more. Think, have you ever thought about it like that? Because he, he, can, he can make you think that somebody thinks something about you and you'll hate them for 20 years. It's true. It's true. Please don't act like it's not. I've been living around here a long time. I know a lot of y'all folks. Okay? Y'all think, it, they, they, everybody thinks they know me so they can tell all of my stuff. I know you just the same. And thank goodness some of y'all want to throw all your life out on social media. So I can find out stuff I didn't want to know. Yeah, so let's get into the word. Uh, We'll review. I'll tell you that Sister Peaches is still in ICU, but uh, she's doing much better resting this evening. And, uh, and I am, uh, by the help of the Lord, going to be able to go see her tomorrow. Um, everybody is, it's not just carte blanche, come in and visit like it used to be. There are limitations for, um, due to COVID and what have you. But he did send me a password and stuff and told me I can come see her. So I'm going to do that. And, and then I'm sure we'll be reaching out to you uh, for us to be able to help them out a little bit when she gets to come home. Uh, and, uh, but he did text me last night and just big, long deal, thanking me for everything the church has done, sent, reached out, what have you. And I want to thank you for that, too. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'll say this publicly. When I looked up and saw him Sunday morning, out in the middle of that aisle right there worshiping, uh, it did something to me. It did something to me, and, and uh, I, I really appreciate Brother Walter and Sister Peaches. And so the bait of Satan, part two. Um, if you weren't here last week, I just encourage you to go on Facebook. River Bend Pentecostals Live is our Facebook page. And you can watch last week, and it'll make more sense. But I'm going to review a little bit of it for you here real quickly. And uh, um, I don't know about you all, but I've been gnawing on it a little bit this week. And uh, I've been trying to, Brother David, I've been trying to get some stuff fixed inside of me. I don't want to be like this. I don't want to fall prey to the tricks of the enemy. So I'm going to review. And I want to say this to you. As I was reading today, I thought, my mercy, there's so much stuff in here to talk about. And, and uh, the, the principles are obviously all applicable in dealing with offense. And really what we're learning how to do is not be offended by offense. Because we know it's coming, right? The Lord said it's impossible that it's not going to come. But we don't have to be offended. We don't have to be offended. And sometimes the Lord blesses me and lets me, and I'm sure that the person trying to do the offending doesn't appreciate this much, 
But every now and again, somebody would be trying to be mean, and I get tickled. <laughs> and I go to thinking crazy things like, it would blow your mind right now if I just kissed you smack on the mouth while you was, <laughs> while you was unloading your mind to me. So, I mean, I ain't recommending you do that, but it don't hurt nothing to think it. So, uh, uh, but I'm, I'm thankful that the Lord wants us to keep getting better. Amen? So, um, so these principles are all applicable in dealing with offense, but they're also applicable in other areas of our walk with God. And so hang on some things, and I'm going to tell you this. You're going to feel healing come all throughout this series. You don't have to wait till we climb the mountain to say, now how, what am I going to do with it? God's going to minister. He did last week. He ministered last week, and he's going to minister again this week, and somebody's going to get delivered all through this series. It's going to happen. So be ready. Be ready. Um, the Lord began to challenge his disciples. This, this is given in the, the last six months of Jesus' ministry, which only lasted for about three and a half years. So three years in, he begins to challenge the disciples. And one of the things I hope to that, that I hope happens from this series is we'll get an attitude that says, Pastor, you can challenge me. And I won't get offended. Ain't it amazing how that works? Huh? And then, of course, as we talked about, every challenge you get ain't coming from pastor. Sometimes God himself is going to challenge you. All right, now, hang with me. Hang with me. Um, the disciples, the Lord said, if an old boy does you wrong, you tell him, hey, man, you hurt my feelings. You upset me. That was wrong. And he says, I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? you got to forgive him right. however many times it happens. Right. And he said he can do it seven times in the same day, which we know, Brother Blake, doesn't really mean the number seven, but it's God's number of perfection, which means basically if it's seven million times in a day, you're going to have to forgive him. And just like the disciples, we think, well, I don't know if I can do that or not. Because that's what the disciples said. They said, Lord, if you want us to do that, you're going to have to increase our faith because we don't have what it takes right now to do it. And now we've learned that there's a couple of things that are inevitable. Offenses will come. All right, they're going to come. We live in a fallen world. Can we say that together? We live in a fallen world. Say it. That's something you might have to preach to yourself very often. All right? We live in a fallen world, a world that is separated from God. All right? Sin reigns in the world. In the world, you will have tribulation. That's the book. Okay? Offenses are going to come. But I must learn to not be what? First thing I got to make sure is I'm not the one doing the offending. Because the Lord said you'd be better off dead than be offending somebody, one of these little ones particularly. And I've got to learn to not be offended. I've got to learn that being offended, or offense is inevitable. It's coming. Being offended is not inevitable. It's not inevitable. I don't have to live my life offended. And when I'm, I'm just going to wait off like I'm, like I'm maybe the pastor or something around here. We got to get deliverance from being a victim. Because there's nobody that gets offended more than victims. Because you wake up in the morning expecting to get offended. All right, yes, ma'am. Inevitable, it means it's going to happen. Can't stop it. Nothing you can do to stop it. Uh, there's a trap that's set. There's two things that have to happen for a trap to work. Number one, it's got to be hidden from you. 
All right, it's got to be disguised. And number two, it has to be baited. And the bait will be something that attracts you. Remember we talked about this the other night. For some reason or the other, it has become the norm in our world. And I don't want you to get what's going on in our world mixed up with what the teaching. This is Jesus teaching way back in about 29 A.D., all right? It, it, this, this is not a knee-jerk reaction to what's going on out in the world right now. All right? Which is everybody's offended about something. And they don't mind telling you that offended me, that offended me, that offended me. What's it going to be like when the church ain't caught up in that junk no more? When we're not interested in it, when we're not attracted to it anymore. When we're like, my life is a whole lot better loving folks instead of being mad all the time. Amen. All right. The offense results, being offended results in an unhealthy focus on me. Because even if I'm focused on the offense and the offender, it's still all about me because it's what they did to me. Okay, now chapter number one, the title of it was Me Offended. Now we had some of that going on in here last week. We had some folks like, boy, I don't get offended. <laughs> boy, you better be careful telling stories in the church house. All right, because we do. We're learning how, the Lord wouldn't be having me teach this if we dealt well with offense. If we had it all figured out, the Lord would just tell you, stay home. You don't need the word. Let me tell you how often that's been happening. About zero. The Lord ain't told nobody to stay home because you don't need to hear that teaching. All right? Only people you care about can hurt you. Only people you care about can offend you. Because people you don't care about, you don't care what they do. Now that says if we stay offended all the time, there's a blessing in that. That means I got a lot of close relationships. I care about a whole lot of people. I've made myself vulnerable. And that's okay. All right? Uh, there is a curse that comes on you when you get offended. And one of the things that happens is you begin to feel like and say, I'm the only one ever been done like this. There ain't nobody ever been treated as bad as me. Nobody's ever been, I mean, I, I just, everybody hates me. I don't even know why I live anymore. Everybody hates me. That's the way the trick of the enemy comes. Anybody ever struggled with that before? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, a, that's one of the first things the devil's going to tell you, don't nobody love you. You don't matter to nobody. Why do you think, Brother David, that the suicide rate is going out the roof? Because people are hopeless. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to get fixed. You know why? There, there's a world out there that needs us to be who they can go to. And they can come in like I preach Sunday and be a part of something that's working and something that's going to allow them to become who God intended for them to be all along. Um, offense is the tool the enemy uses to bind me. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 through 26 in the New Living Translation says, A servant of the Lord must not quarrel. What's it mean to be quarrelsome? It means you disagree on a matter of principle. You know what that means? Every time somebody says that sky's blue, you say it's gray. Some of us is like that. All right? Let me tell you something. If somebody, if somebody says the sky's blue and it's got a blue-gray tint to it, it don't mean beans from Shinola for you to correct them. He 
says, you got to be kind to everybody. That means don't say everything you think. Am I causing trouble, Kevin? Good. Good. That's what I came here for. Well, I can't wait till one of them Amber Alerts goes off and everybody that's holding their phone drops it. <laughs> you can't be an argumentative person fussing and arguing about everything and everybody. You got to be kind to everyone. You got to be able to teach. And you got to be patient with difficult people. Somebody say, oh, me. Oh, Gently. I promise you, this scripture has been vibrating in my head all week. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. For goodness sake, if you witness to somebody and they don't agree with you, don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. Gently instruct them. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts and they'll learn the truth. That's what we want. You fly off the handle, damn them and condemn them, do all kinds of crazy stuff to them, you ain't getting another chance to try to win them. They don't want to be a part of nothing you got going. Let me tell you something else. Don't be involved in all the water cooler junk at work and then go try to witness to somebody. Oh, I might have to get the organ up here playing with me. <laughs> then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap. For they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. Timothy is written to a young preacher and it's Paul telling him how to handle church folks. Sister Maria, this passage is not talking about all the dirty, rotten sinners you know. Talking about church folks. Yeah, I need a squirrel to turn loose in here about right now because we got quiet all of a sudden. Because we like it, Sister Sheila, when it's the sinners. But when the word starts hitting me in the forehead right between the eyeballs and getting me nervous and making me feel like I need to put some foam across my toes. Okay, that's what's happening right now. We got to come to our senses and realize a whole lot of that junk we've been carrying around for eons ain't done nothing but hurt us. And the people that we're carrying it around against, they done moved on. We're going, we got to be set free. The enemy, you understand the book is saying that there are church folks working for the devil. Brother Blake, I want that gone, man. I want it gone. And it's, it's going to be. You know how it gets gone? We obey the word of God. We say, you, you and I have to say, Meredith, if you're going to be the camera lady, you're going to have to be moving and grooving because I don't stand still very long. But we're going to have to say, Brother Cody, Tonight, that word was for me. You know what happened, Sister Leanne? If we're all jacked up like this is talking about, we sat out here, I promise to goodness, I've seen them go to make a mistake and get your brain overload your head, and I preach something, and you think you know who I'm talking about, and before you know it, you done cut your eyes at them. <laughs> Let me tell you something, that ain't the way it works. You come here not so you can find some help for somebody else. You come here to hear the word for you. Yeah. And I got to get myself fixed. We want to get all the stuff fixed we can see. And the Holy Ghost says that don't mean nothing if we don't get the stuff fixed we can't see. Yes, let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost is not going to leave you like he found you. That business of believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and, you know, just keep doing everything you've been doing except start coming to church a couple times a month. That dog don't hunt. 
When you submit your body as a living sacrifice to God, you are telling him, all of me is subject to whatever you want. All of me. All right. Miss Jackie, I'm sorry. Tonight, I don't usually teach like this. It's sometimes worse. You know what? We just got to be real. I, I saw somebody, somebody, this is crazy now. This is crazy. A preacher friend of mine put on the internet just while ago on a private deal where not everybody can see it. He said, I just left my office and I had a couple and he called the name of the church from another church here in town. And they said, listen, we're tired of all we hear is fluff. We want a preacher that tells us the direction the world is headed ain't the right one. We want a preacher. They're, they're in his office, and he said the church across town they came from and said, what's going on when people are just, and I, I'm ahead of myself right now, but I feel directed, and I don't know if it's the Holy Ghost or the GL. But I want you to know the world is hungry for something that causes them to want to be different. I don't want to stay like I was. Oh, we're talking about divorce is rampant, suicide is rampant. People are dying left and right from this crazy drug stuff that's going on out there, and they're begging for help. We got it. We got it. All right. I'm still in review, ain't I? I'm sorry, baby. There are two categories of offense. One of them, you've really been offended. The second one, you think you've been offended. Don't know if it's real or not, but you believe you have. Then the revelation of the condition of our heart is... On the inside, pride pretends like I ain't been offended and it don't matter. Hide it. But the cure is the Lord has got to get it brought to the surface. And sometimes offense is what does that. When somebody does something to me and it causes a reaction in me, we've learned, Sister Dana, that I ain't the devil winning. Because we like, oh, we, I just hit a nerve. Here we go. We like to keep all our junk hid. Remember Sister Maria talked about it? Was that recovery or elements? Our Sister Maria talked about it in elements, about living like 30 years, putting on that smile. Everything's just wonderful, all Pollyanna and stuff. Anybody know who Pollyanna was? Okay. That's not saying we got to go around with our lip dragging the ground, but it's all right to say, kind of messed up, need some help. Things ain't going that good. We got to be real. We got to be real. The cure is God lets the stuff come to the surface so he can skim it off and we be purified. That ain't the devil doing that. That's the Lord. All right. It said, buy me gold tried in the fire. That's purified gold. And sometimes the offense is what causes you to go through the trial. And it's impossible to repent if all we are is hung up on it's their fault. It's impossible to get it right as long as we're saying it's their fault, the blame game. Let's move to chapter 2. Aggravating. I get carried away. Chapter 2, Matthew chapter 24, verses 10 through 13. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound. You know what iniquity means? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. It means you have no structure in your life Whatever feels good, do it. That ain't the way of the book. That ain't the way of the spirit. That ain't the way of the Lord. There's always going to be structure in your relationship with God. Because iniquity shall abound, 
the love of many shall wax cold. That word wax means gradually, just get cold. Kind of, Kevin, you said it tonight, kind of just drift away. You don't fire the motor up and run away, just kind of drift away. You know, so. Um, then, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Now let's talk about it. In verse number three, the disciples asked the Lord, what's going to be the sign of the end and the sign of your return? Now nobody knows when the Lord's coming. But he wants us to know what's going on, what's going to be going on in the world when he does come. Right? He wants us to know the season of the world, what's going on in the world and or the church. Because there's just as much signs of the end time in the church as there are in the world. And this particular passage is actually talking about believers rather than the world. Now, everything, all, everybody all right? Okay. All right, don't get distracted. Don't get distracted because we're going to miss it. But I mean, if you do, you can go home and watch it again, which is a good thing. Many different things are going to rise up in opposition to the church and the people of God. And an ensuing sign of the end of the world and the coming of the Lord will be many will be offended. Now, reconcile that with the world we live in right now. What does that tell you? We're there, Brother David. But let's talk about who the many are he's talking about here. See, later on in the passage, it speaks about the love of many growing cold. Now, that word love there comes from the Greek word agape. And it is the love that God sheds abroad in the hearts of his people. It's an unconditional love. Now, filio is a conditional love. It's the one that I give to you because we're pals. And I expect it in return. Agape is just freely given. All right, now here's how we get connected to the love of God. First, Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8, God commended his love, agape, toward us in that while we were yet sinners, we weren't loving him. He loved us anyway enough to die for us. God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So that's the agape love for everybody. Got me? Romans 8 and 5. You got me? You with me? And then the Bible says, and the love of God shed abroad in our hearts when we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's Romans chapter 5 and verse number 5. So now the love that's shown everybody on Calvary because he died for the sins of the whole world has now been imparted to those who have received the gift of his spirit. So no longer is the love toward us, but now the love of God is not just in us, flowing through us. That's an important difference. We, because we're going to talk in a minute about people get the love of God in them, but it just stays there. That ain't how it's intended to work. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Okay, now, so the many is referring to those who have for themselves Receive the love of God, but in the end time, in the face of opposition, they have become offended and their love has grown cold. Now, I ain't going to go there. Let's talk about the law of sowing and reaping. The law of sowing and reaping is Whatever you want to reap, that's what you have to sow. 
You can't decide to reap something. For instance, you can't decide. You go out there in your garden. I know Brother Ray makes a garden. Brother Billy's made a garden. Some others have made a garden. You can't go out in the garden and plant corn seed and hope you get a garden full of tomatoes. All right, you can't do it. All right, same way in living for God. You can't sow to the flesh. Now, what does that mean? I hope you would ask. What that means is everything you do in your life can't be about you first. All right? All right? It, it can't be about you first. If everything I do is all about me, then I'm sowing to the flesh. But if everything I do is about the Lord first and others second, I'm so into the spirit because that's the law of God, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor is yourself. Upon these two hang all the law and the prophets. Okay, so if we sow to the flesh, we shall reap corruption. But if we sow to the spirit, we will reap life everlasting. For instance, I, I, Brother Larry's not in here, but I saw him put something on there. If you spend all your day watching the stories, okay, you spend all your day watching the guiding light and the young and the restless in the days of our lives and some more that's on there probably. And then you show up at church and wonder why you don't ever get nowhere with God. You was sowing to the flesh, hoping to reap of the spirit. Somebody said, hmm, I hope that meant, well, I might have to cut them things off. Okay? Same thing, you, you can't stay on Facebook and other people's business all the time and then try to do the work of the Lord. Can't do it. All right. But if we sow to the Spirit, we will reap life everlasting. Look at here. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Let's don't get tired of doing the right thing. Why would you get tired of doing the right thing? What's that? Yep, it does seem like forever. Somebody else said something. That's exactly right. We've been doing the right thing. I've had people say that. Some people was thinking that tonight when Brother Richard was talking about all these blessings. And let me tell you something. I can't be telling everything I know, but you're sitting in the middle of some incredibly blessed people. You wouldn't believe the, the growth in the pocketbook of about 75% of our church since we've been saying that prayer. I'm talking about new jobs. I'm talking about doubling salaries. Yes, sir. That's exactly, that's why you, that's why you get weary and well doing. It's cause you feel like I ain't got nothing out of this. I've been paying my tithes. I've been giving in the offering and I've been coming to church and it's supposed to be something in it for me when I do. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't know nothing about the love of God if you feel that way. That's why we're getting delivered from an attitude that says, when I show up there and I pay my tithes and I give in the offering, I better hear the songs I like. I better get the kind of temperature I want. I better get to sit next to who I want. It, and if I don't get it the way I want, I ain't coming no more. I ain't got but one word for you, and I'm not being mean or ugly, but sayonara. Because it ain't for you. Sister Ruth taught me when I first became pastor, this place is a hospital. Not a country club. I'm going to get in a lot of trouble before it's all said and done, Brother David. The author, the author of the book says that we need to have, we need to develop, develop faith in this spiritual law. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. We've got to develop, we got to believe the word. And what, think about this. I heard Brother, I heard brother uh, Paul Mooney preach this one time. When the children of Israel, let me say this real quickly. When the children of Israel, Moses was on the mountain for how long? 40 days to get the law. All right? The 40th day, he's coming down, Sister Maria, and they've made a calf, and they're all out there dancing naked around it. Okay? 
And the people said, if you read this in the Bible, it's incredible. The people said, Moses has been gone so long, we don't know what's became of him. Make us a calf so we can go on and worship because I guess he just took too long. The Lord told Moses, you better get back down there. He said, the people have quickly, they have quickly turned away from me. Look at them two perspectives. Huh? The pers Ooh, I feel Jesus right now. The perspective of man says it ain't happening quick enough for me. Oh, man, Sister Dana, didn't nobody know that some of our offense might be a God? It ain't happening quick enough. And in the mind of the Lord, Brother David, it ain't been long at all. So we got to realize I'm not, I got filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost because I want to be saved from sin and make it to heaven. All right, now look here, let's talk about that just a minute. Let's talk about that. He said, we shall reap if we faint not. The only way to reap the blessings of God is don't quit, period. And keep planting the right thing. Keep sowing the right thing and you're going to reap. It's promised to you. Now look at here. John Bevere, who wrote the book, he had a situation where he did everything he could to show somebody he loved them. But it was never reciprocated. That means it was never returned. It was never acknowledged. And in fact, just the opposite happened. He would try to do something nice for him. I've seen this in marriages before. Marriages be having a little bit of difficulty and the old boy go try to buy a gift for his wife who don't like him no more anyway. Boy, I, bet, I think I just waded off in something. And she say, I can't believe you bought me something so stupid. That's what was happening right here. Bevere was trying to show love to this old boy, and it was getting thrown back in his face. As a matter of fact, the old boy would criticize everything he did and act ugly toward him. So finally, John went to the Lord in prayer, complaining to the Lord, and he said, this ain't working like it's supposed to. I keep on loving this old boy, and he ain't doing nothing back the right way. What's the deal here? And the Lord said, Brother David, here's the problem. You need to develop faith in the love of God. Because when you sow the love of God, you will reap the love of God. Problem is, he was wanting to sow love that he reaped from his friend. And that agape love is I'm going to give it and I don't expect nothing in return. Oh, goodness. Let me dig into it just a little bit because there's some things I want to say. And when you reap the love of God, it might not come from the field you planted it in. But it's going to come because he promised it would. The closer Jesus got to the cross the more alone he was. And his prayer, his last prayer was, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We've always assumed that was the soldiers. You know who that was? Everybody who'd abandoned him. Everybody who turned their back on him. What a privilege to be able to go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to forgive everybody who ever done us wrong. Huh? What a privilege and a blessing. There's about five people that believe it. Let me tell you something. When we all get on board with it, we're going to see the revival we've been looking for. All right. Let me keep moving. Because look at here. The great expectations. Boy, I want to unpack this. I don't want won't probably get done. But we got to realize our expectations are not in man, but in God. Now I'm fixing to, I'm fixing to throw out some stuff. You ready? You 
haven't failed in obeying the will of God when it doesn't work in the person you sent it to. Brother Shannon's going to like this because it's something that we've all been seeing. Look here. When you love from a carnal mind, your love is attached to a reciprocity agreement, which means if I love you, then you love me, and we're a happy family with a great big hug and a kiss from me to you. Won't you say you love me too? Now, I'm not damning and condemning the big purple dinosaur, all right? But I am telling you, that's a mentality that don't come from the book. Look here, let me tell you some stuff. Let me tell you some stuff. When we love with the love of God, we give up the responsibility for the results. The Lord doesn't say, love people and you'll get something back. He just says, love people. So what do I have to do? What if I don't get nothing back? That ain't part of the deal. Okay, that ain't the part of the deal. The deal is, I got to love folks. And Brother David, I can't love them if I'm holding stuff against them. Remember he come to the disciples? I got to forgive them. I got to forgive them. I might have Brother Cody testify, and I'm not really going to out in public, but he helped me last night, Brother Cody Pikey. Listen, when you give up the responsibility of results, it frees us to love more than we've loved before because we are sowing in the accord with the plan of God rather than the plan of man. Loving without expectation of anyone but me. I no longer expect anything out of anybody but myself. I don't know that we like that very much, Brother Blake. That's why when I told you put that bumper sticker on the back of your car, hashtag Riverbend Culture, pay for somebody's food behind you and don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. Because if you're doing it because you want the glory, you ain't gained nothing from it. Because the same one that glories you today might give you a cussing tomorrow. The glory of man is fickle. People change like the weather. But God stays the same. So I got to step away from the expectations of mankind and step into the expectations of God. And you know something? He ain't never failed me. Uh, look at here. If I trust the law of God, oh man, I'm, please hear this. Please, 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 please hear this. This is so important. I saw faces of people when I was typing this and I was reading it and it was flowing from heaven. You can ask my wife. Well, she had a big old pot of chicken and rice waiting on me and I didn't stop and eat. Those of you that know me ought to know how important I was getting right that minute. Look here. If I trust the law of God and I love with the love of God, I am releasing everybody from the bondage of my expectations. What's the bondage of my expectations? When they don't respond like I want them to, I don't like them no more. Huh? Ma'am? I'm sorry. If I trust the law of God and love with the love of God, it's longer. I wasn't done. But I am releasing everybody around me from the bondage of my expectations, which are limited. 
and I'm allowing the unlimited power of God to be loosed to work through what I've planted. Did, it, did y'all hear me? I am replacing the limitations of my low expectations with the infinite possibilities of what God can do with what I just planted. You with me? You with me? When I'm, ooh, Holy Ghost, help me right now. When I plant according to my expectations, I have severely limited the harvest. But when I am obedient to God and I plant according to his will, I am loosing the seed to the infinite power of God. Uh, you might have to go home and watch it again. If, if you just want to watch that one part, you can hit that little button and go bzzz right there. Okay? Look here. Let me keep moving just a minute. If we don't plant, and Brother Kevin, you know why we don't plant? Because we didn't see it work. But Brother Shannon, it was never my job for to make it work. I can't be pitiful, I can't be mean, I can't be ugly, I can't be sweet. I have no control over results. The Bible says one plants, another waters, but God gives the increase. I've got to remember that. Man. And when I lose people From my expectations, I have eliminated the possibility of being offended. Oh, I thought that we was only going to learn how to deal with offense. Not only am I learning how to deal with offense, I'm learning how to minimize the opportunity for offense. Let me tell you this. Look here. Hear this. Christmas time's coming. Listen to what the preacher's saying tonight. Look here. Gift given. If I am giving it for their response, I am wasting my time. Give gifts with no strings attached. Give because you love them. And that's what Christians do for people they love with the love of God is give. And free them from the bondage of having to respond in a way that makes you feel good. Because if that is your intent, you weren't giving them anything but you are giving yourself the gift of their gratitude. I want them to respond in a way that makes me feel good. And if they don't, I'm offended. Is that, Brother David, how easy is that to see? Am I doing, are are y'all with me? Am I doing all right with that? Yes, ma'am. You give a gift or something like that, and they respond to something that's not right itself. Right. It is exactly, exactly. I really gave that because I wanted something. That's why. Let me tell you something. I don't do good with. I am not a good gift getter. I want to do better about that. All right, I'm not. It embarrasses me. All right, but if somebody. I'm planting a seed right now. If through the Christmas season, if somebody gets you something and it's a surprise, for goodness sakes, don't go to the store and buy them something because you feel bad. What an insult. 
Let them bless you. Let them love you with the love of God. I feel the Holy Ghost in here right now. It's something you say, well, that don't really matter. You know what I just did, Sister Dana, is I just painted a picture we all understand of this whole lesson. Yes, sir. That's true, that's true, but what we got to make sure we're doing is doing everything for the right reason. Because we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We are representing Jesus Christ, all right? And we are not, how, we, we talked about this in elements class, and if you don't come to elements class, you're cheating yourself. All right, we talked about this in elements class. We've got to deliver people. We've got to set them free from a life of being manipulated emotionally. And this is one way we do it. Come on now. We like, if our kids be bad, you know what we like to do, Brother David? We like to tell them, well, I did this for you, and I did this for you, and I did this for you, and this is how you repay me. Oh, am I the only one ever done that before? It sounded stupid when I was doing it. But the truth is, I didn't know what else to say. But I do now. You know why I did that for them, Sister Maria? Because I love them. They don't owe me nothing for it. And when I made them feel like they owed me something for it, I got to apologize. All right. Are we okay? I just messed up your whole Christmas season. Let me tell you something, I get so mad at my wife sometimes through Christmas. Not really mad, but I, it frustrates me because we can find something for somebody that she says, I think they'll love it. I said, get it for them. But we spent this much on the other one, and this don't cost that much. So it's got to be even. What in the cotton-picking world? But we all think that way. Do you understand that this teaching can deliver us from that nonsense? And we'll really be able to go shopping without being under bondage. Because I want to show people I love them. I am not. Please forgive me, Dr. Vincent Van Peel. I'm not trying to win friends and influence people by giving. We give because we love. I don't know about you, but I feel something happening in the Holy Ghost. You know what? I'm being changed. I'm being changed. My mind is being changed. My heart is being changed. And I feel like that there's some kind of a party going on in heaven, and the Lord is saying, it's about time that these people start realizing that I'm that good of a God that I want to bless them that much and I've got a revival that I'm about to dump out on them that's going to blow their mind. I don't know where some of this stuff comes from. I wish I was smart enough to think it up. i got to quit. We'll pick up at Walls of Protection next Wednesday and move into chapter three. I'll just lay off the review. If you want to review, watch it on the internet. What do you think? Huh? Let me tell you what. The plow is sunk deep and it's breaking up a lot of ground. Let's stand. How about let's just thank the Lord for a minute. You got some thanksgiving in you right now? Lord, I thank you for the word. I thank you for the things that you're opening up to me. I thank you for the things you're doing in my life. And I'm thankful, God, that if I let you, you'll use me as a vessel, a vessel of honor worthy of your anointing and flow through me, Lord. Let me be delivered from all this messed up thinking and let me be delivered and, and let me set everybody free from my minimalistic expectations, uh, God, and loose people into yours, into your possibilities, into your hope, into your strength, into your power. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Thank you for truth and the Holy Ghost. Oh, thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't forget, November the 23rd will be our midweek service, Thanksgiving week. It's at 7 o'clock p.m. And let me just clear up something. If you go out of here and lie and tell somebody, pastor's going to make you testify, I'm coming off the top rope on you. That's this place up here. I ain't making nobody testify, and I never have made nobody testify. But somebody went and told a whole bunch of folks, if you come on that Tuesday night, pastor's going to make you testify, and they all stayed home. I ain't going to make nobody testify. But who doesn't want to get a chance to stand up and say, I'm thankful for what God has done in my life this year? That's all you got to do. And if you don't want to stand up, come and listen to everybody else. Brother David, it's a great night. It always is. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. So November 23rd at 7 o'clock, we'll sing a song and we'll, t we'll testify. Everybody that wants to can. But we might have to have put a time limit on it. <laughs> the Christmas parade December the 11th. Please get with Sister Amanda if you want to be a part of that. you be buying some Christmas cards to give to the nursing homes. There's a box out there that all you do is write a nice message and sign it, the Riverbend Pentecostals. Don't put your name on it. Don't put anything else. That's who we are. Put that on there. Yes, sir. Make sure Ronnie goes last. Woo. <laughs> that might be a deal. Um, <laughs> Brother Parkey's going to be preaching for us on December the 5th. You don't want to miss that. Brother Parkey has preached for us many times. He's a district superintendent of the Missouri District of the United Pentecostal Church. He's an incredible minister, incredible friend of this church. I'll never forget as long as I live that when we pulled up to Johnny and Carol's house the day Johnny passed away, there sat his car. And I can't tell you what he did to our family, praying with us in the kitchen that day. It was an incredible blessing. He hasn't preached for us since then. This will be the first time. But uh, please make plans to be here on December the 5th. Um, we're going to have an ugly Christmas sweater party. We just got to tell you when and where. It'll be sometime between now and Christmas. And uh, ladies, be looking for a Christmas ornament for the ornament exchange. That's a, the deal that the ladies do, and it's always a lot of fun. Are there any other announcements? If you need a Bait of Satan book and you don't have one, Anna has some that available that she'd be happy to, you, now you know you're giving it, yes. not loaning it, okay. Yes. Just making sure. Because <laughs> if she would have said loaning it, I would have then told y'all you, you're borrowing it from her. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. That's all right. That's all right. I'm giving y'all one of them as a handout. So anyway, thank you for coming tonight. Isn't it a great looking crowd? Thank you so much for coming. What about the presence of the Lord that's here tonight? It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. God bless you. Thank you for coming. We'll see y'all Sunday. 10 o'clock is elements class. 11 o'clock is service. Expect a great time from the Lord. You're dismissed. Make sure you shake hands with our guests.